and welcome to Don't Filter Feelings. If you've listened to the podcast before, then welcome back. And if you've already had us in your ears, then hello. I'm Lauren Layfield, and on this podcast, we have conversations about the issues that matter with people who have stories to share. And this episode is all about modern families. And I'm currently on set at Hollyoaks with Ellis Hollins and Steph Waring. Ellis and Steph, welcome to Don't Filter Feelings. Uh, we are currently doing this podcast in the Lomax's uh, living room set at Hollyoaks. Have you done many scenes here, Ellis? I have. I have, because the mother of my child lives here. So Aww. it's only right that... Uh, yeah. I mean, you must have done scenes everywhere on the set of Hollyoaks oh, because you've yeah. been here so long. I've been about. Uh, <laughs> what can I say? I've lived here, I think, everyone's home at least. How many years have you done? 16 now. So are you more or less than Kieran Richardson? Oh, I think it is more, isn't it? Must be I th- sure. I think it's more, but only by a year or two at Stop. most. Um, but yeah, I'm getting there now to be one of the longest. Oh, you were how old when you started? Three. <laughs> Three? Yeah. You're so cute. I know. I know. Hello, so, old you know? Nineteen. Oh God, he's still so young. <laughs> getting on though. So yeah. <laughs> I feel like an old man. <laughs> Uh, and Steph, uh, any scenes been done in this before? I never even knew this place existed. <laughs> really? yeah. No, because the old set, was, this is a replica yeah. set, isn't it? It was in another location in the building. And I'd done some scenes in there like years ago, but I've never stepped foot on this particular set. Well, first question we always ask, I guess, is how are you feeling today, Ellis? I feel good. I feel good now I'm here. Bit tired, uh, aren't you, well today? Yeah, I'm Bit tired. tired. <laughs> I did wake up about 20 minutes ago, but otherwise, I'm feeling great. Oh, good. That's yeah. nice to hear. Steph, how about you? Honestly, as well, you can. You can oh, be honest. How long have bit. you got, darling? <laughs> Come, I mean, on. Yeah. You know. Come on. We have got half an hour podcast, going, so keep are it we short. Going deep with this. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Deep, right. Yeah, don't okay. feel well, I have, a, I have a list in my back. Now I'm joking. <laughs> um, you know, I'm, I'm all right today. You know, it's um, very, very busy at the minute, so don't have kind of having time to check in with myself sometimes. So it's nice that you ask. Thank you. That's quite right. I feel all right. That's, that's quite all right. It is, it is hard, isn't it? You're saying you've got a kid's birthday party to I do, to plan. yeah. My um, youngest daughter turns nine on Monday, and so her birthday's on Saturday. And because I've been working so much with Hollyoaks, it's actually getting time to get the presents, organise the birthday party, get the cake. Um, it's like putting so, on yeah. Glastonbury, isn't it, for kids now these it days really as well, isn't it? Is, it really is. Like, they want everything, <laughs> don't they? <laughs> um, you know what? She's pretty easy to go, my child. I'm going to take her ice skating, so we're all going to ice skating, which is great because I'm going to get back on the ice and I've not been on since doing dancing on ice so I'm going to be have you not touched the ice since then um, once since then Um, so I'm I'm really hoping I remember what to do but I'm sure it's like riding a bike riding my skates (laughs) to this day I think of all the 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 reality TV shows out there that for me is by far the scariest it's terrifying Trust me, it's terrifying. Like, I, I don't know how people the, do it. The training was amazing, but the actual, the, the live show, because you got to get it right. You know, you don't want to mess up live on TV. Yeah. And it's just one, like, if your blade turns out the wrong way or, you know, and then, yeah, it's it's game over. But yeah, that's so Strictly Come Dancing, part. that's a scary one. But to be on ice in front of a live audience. Yeah. Yeah. On dancing live on knives, darling. I don't like it. <laughs> that's what you call it. I don't dancing like on it. knives. Did you ever get any close to doing that headbanger thing that oh, they do? Oh, no, I was out by week two. <laughs> <laughs> Um, right, so let's talk first. Ellis, you've grown up, as we discussed, on this set, basically. Mm-hmm. You've been here since the age of three. Um, and you've had all sorts of different family dynamics within Hollyoaks, haven't oh, yes. you? <laughs> yeah, it's been... It's, I've got a nice palette going on in terms of family. I think I'm related to at least 90% of the people in the village, one way or another. <laughs> really, like, in terms of ex-brother-in-laws and stuff like that like someone's dog's mate's girlfriend like that's probably how it's, <laughs> it is a lot of the time in the show um yeah I've, but the thing is i don't really have much of a family cindy's my only family member i think apart from steph my daughter mm. um and holly who's now not here jude when is jude related Jude's I love that you sister. don't even quite know. Oh, Jude. Oh, I oh, thought Jude. you meant Jude who played... Um... Oh, no, Liam. No, yeah, no, I was going to no, say. No, 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 Jude. <laughs> Probably, in, though, somehow. As in Jude Cunningham, darling. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. Um, yeah, but I think everyone else is just kind of a... who I've taken on as a, as a kind of surrogate family. And also, I'm guessing kind of off screen, people who work here must be like your family, right? Yeah. Because you've grown up with so many of them. Yeah, second home. Yeah, like this, this I could walk around here blindfolded, you know, get a coffee and then go to bed, <laughs> um, you know, all with with a blindfold on. It's um, it's good. No, everyone treats it as one big family, you know. And what about your own family, your actual own family? What's your setup like? Um, 
Well, I, I come from a house where I live with my mum and my grandma um, back in Oldham. And I was in that kind of family where I was raised by just them two. What was it like growing up then with two strong females in your family? Um, it's I'm a very good mediator um, <laughs> because <laughs> there's plenty of cat fights, you know, <laughs> as, as you would. Um, no, it's it's taught me a lot. Um, and it's given me a good perspective on life. Um, and I think they were really good role models um, in terms of the circumstances that they were given to raise me in. Um, but then to to bring me here and do this, you know, to have me on such a lucky break, you know, one in a million chance to get on this, I feel like I'm really giving it back to them now, you know, and I want to give back to them what they've done for me and raise me and how they've you know, kind of moulding me as a person, so... Um, That's really cute. Yeah, I think they've they've done everything for me that they can. And what's it like, would you say, like, a lot of people have grown up in a house where there's, you know, a, a dad and a mum. What's the difference with when you have two women bringing you up, would you say? Um, what was your experiences of it? I think, well, in terms of my mum, I know for sure, she acted as kind of the mum and dad figure. So it was that kind of authority figure, you know, um, putting me in my place, as it were, and also showing that compassionate side, uh, which I think she's done really well because I respect her as much as I can know I can go to her for anything I want or, you know, if I've got a problem. Um, so I don't think I... Well, I don't think that I've, I've lost anything from not, you know, spending time with my dad or anything like that. Um, I think it's helped me and it's made me who I am today. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't I don't regret anything. I think it's, um, I've been raised really well. And so if your mum was kind of the kind of maternal looking after you, but also the authoritarian kind of figure, then what role did grandma play? Was she just like the really nice one that just gave you sweets? Uh, <laughs> so I think my mum was more of the authority figure and then I go to my grandma if she'd upset me. Um, there's people out there that say <laughs> like every family needs like that male dynamic. They, that every kid needs a, a father role. What would you say to that? I can understand it, of course, because... I get that a father figure brings a lot to the table, which no other kind of family member, even, you know, an uncle couldn't bring what a dad could to the table. But I feel like my mum's made up for that. And as well, I've got a lot of people who I look up to here from when I was growing up, you know, in terms of teenagers, um, who I to kind of take on board their, oh, that characteristics kind of thing. Like in terms of Ashley Taylor Dawson, who plays Darren Osborne, I sometimes do things so similarly to him. Like, if we're both on the set, like, we'll both be just really subtle things like clicking and whistling, like, that we just, I've picked up from him over the years, and I bet he gets really annoyed by them <laughs> because I'm just doing the same thing he does, like, on set. And do you mind me asking, and you don't have to answer this, but yeah, is, is there a reason, like, why your dad's not about? Are you um, okay to talk about all that? All I know is that he went to the shop when I was three for milk and he never came back. Wow. <laughs> I'm only joking, I don't know where he is. <laughs> oh uh, yeah. my God, that's so real. <laughs> don't do that to me. That, I was gonna cry. That is the line that I use for breaking anyone in. Like I remember when Lauren McQueen started <laughs> as Lily, I said that to her and she didn't know how to take me for like a good week and a half. And I came to her a week and a half and uh, later and I was like, you do know I was joking that day, don't you? And she was like, really? I've been thinking about it the whole week and it's like the fact that you'd open up and say that to me like I'm, <laughs> Flattered, but also terrified at the same time with what to do with that information. That's why he's no. an actor, ladies and gentlemen. Just don't know where he is. Just Still no trying idea. to find him. Yeah, no, yeah. I'm not joking. Um, I know his name. I've seen a picture of him. Mm -hmm. That's it. But that's all I care to know because I'm I'm doing fine in my life. I don't need anyone. You know what I mean? I'm, I live on my own now. I've got all the people in my life that influence me enough, you know, who I can go to for anything I want. I don't need someone else. And when I was younger, basically mm. everybody's parents were still together. Mm. It was quite rare that parents yeah. were divorced or, or whatever. You're 19, so you're a few years younger than me. Mm -hmm. What do you see amongst you and your friends? Are most families the kind of classic unit or <sighs> have we got more blended families? I think I... I I don't know. Like, I, I do agree with that the nuclear family isn't so much a thing anymore. And that, you know, two parents, two children, I think, is just one kind of family as opposed to the norm now. I think, you know, single parents, 
you know, people with no parents, you know, even at my age and things like that, I think are becoming more common, more and more every day, really, that you can't say that the nuclear family is really the family anymore because no one's going to really agree with that anymore mm. because the demographics have, have shifted now, I think, so much. And I don't really know why. It must just be, you know, the situation people are in that it's changed. But I don't think that that is the case at all anymore, mm. especially. Yeah. Because that's what I learned in school, that the nuclear family is the family that, not so much that you should be in, but that that's... Ex- not expected, but you know what I mean? Just that's kind of the norm. what society had, wasn't it? That's yeah, what happened to exactly. people. People got married and people had two kids and then that was that. Um, Steph, let's move on to you then. Tell us about your family setup. Oh, um, <laughs> <laughs> completely different. Um, yeah, so I am a single parent and I live on my own with my two children, but they don't actually live with me full time. Mm-hmm. They, I have them for a, a whole week and then they go off to their dads for another whole week so we just have a rotation take it in turns just so that they get to have everything 50 50 down the line with both of us see i've actually not heard about that before because often you hear about situations where it's like oh we're well, at mum's in the week and then mm. dad's on the weekend or the I, third I don't sunday agree with that. like I, I mean personally i don't agree with that for myself um i i'm one of the i, I think that everyone should just do what suits them mm. and their family and everyone should just do them because there is no right way of having a family at all it's your way and what works um the way i looked at it is that we're both parents to a child and so why should um me as a mother have full for have them full time or you know only let their only ha- let their dad see them on the weekend mm. like that's not fair mm. like at all it sort of feels like a trade deal sometimes yeah, and doesn't it, it? It's like, like, i don't i don't agree a with it a negotiation I, that you have to have yeah, over what is a little human being exactly and i just think that they the children should be brought up best they can by by both of us so just by splitting everything down the middle like re- really does work they get half the amount of time with me and half the amount of time with their dads and there's no oh you you have the kids more than I do or you, you know what I mean mm. or there's it yeah it just works I think your split is interesting though because a lot of people will do sometimes like a Monday to yeah Thursday. well we did have that so, so why have you chosen to do week on week because off because like? we we were originally doing like um uh, like long weekends like a Thursday to Monday and then oh, and then it was like a Monday, Tuesday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday so then they'd go say I'd have them like Wednesday, Thursday and then they'd go to the dad's the rest of the week or they'd have them Wednesday, Thursday and then come it was the back and forth there was no consistency the, the kids were getting confused oh I'm at, I'm at yours or I'm at dad's um, you know or even like the one weekend's off and one weekend uh, we, like sorry weekend's on yeah where we, we needed to have something solid so they knew know where they were going to be for a full week and then the childcare aspect was get sorted on the dad's side when they're with them anything they were any plans they wanted to make they sort it all out same on my side so I get them for a full week you know, take them to school, pick them up. I don't actually have to involve myself in their dad's lives. Mm. You know, we're not on the phone constantly going, oh, you know, are you getting them or are we or, you know, that's it really. And I guess as well because of what you do for a living, mm. which we know can be peculiar hours. Sometimes I'm guessing you do night shoots sometimes, yeah. all that kind of thing. Does it make it easier working it that way and able to say, can you have them this week? No, we do it. This sorry, it's my resp- like if I got them for the week, that's my responsibility. I wouldn't be ringing the dad sort of going, oh, "Can you have them?" Interesting. I saw all the um, the childcare out. So you literally have your set week. So yeah. week one is you. Week two is your like yeah, and then your- it, it goes on a like a rotation like that. Oh. So I know when I've got them, and then if I'm working, I sort that so out. So if you have something big that week on, or if you're really busy that week. You'd never put in the phone no. call and say, could you? You wouldn't mind doing me a favour this week? No, because it's my responsibility. So I have to make those arrangements because then it gets in, the, well, I had them this time, so can you do me a favour? And the lines start getting blurred. I just think you just need to... Sounds like a very sensible way of doing well, it. Yeah. I'm yeah. surprised more people don't do it that, that way. Well, I, I don't know. It's just what, like I said, there's, 
there's no way of doing something. There's no handbook that you get given to yeah, say, yeah. this is how things should be. You know, you are, you either get married, you stay married, you have your children, you bring them up, you get divorced, you know, your, your mums have them during the week and they can go see the dads on the weekend. Mm -hmm. There is no rule book. I think you've just got to do what works for you. And mm -hmm. if you can, like, like I say, everything's amicable they're doing it this way mm -hmm. because everything's your responsibility um for a week and then that it's theirs for a week and then you get to, it's kind of best of both worlds even though i miss them like crazy when they're with their fathers it's you kind of get a little bit of your own life back you know yeah. because you don't have the responsibility of freedom yeah you have that bit of freedom you have some gins <laughs> i don't drink <laughs> you can have some netflix <laughs> i have a lot of netflix <laughs> a lot of netflix um, how does your current situation compare to how you grew up what was your family oh. unit like when you grew up it's completely different i well i started off um with the whole traditional 2.4 children you know me my sister my mum and dad um and then my parents blew up when I was nine. So I, you know, my dad sat me and my sister down, give us the conversation, and it was devastating because mm. that was all I knew. And um, I was back and forth between my my mum and my dad for a while, and then I settled with my mum, and then I wanted to live with my dad, and so I, I was. But yeah, it was my choice. There was no my mum and dad saying I want um, Steph or you know or my sister. You know, it was. It was mine and my sister's decision where we wanted to go. But Is that a lot of responsibility when you're that young? to be have that that the decision making is in um, your hands no it, it wasn't a case of they said you make the decision it was just I went I think I just went with how I felt at mm. the time and I'd be like I want to live with dad and my mum was like okay and then I'd be like to my dad I want to go and live with mum and yeah that's kind of I'm just of... wondering if that's why you've now got I'm not a psychologist I'm not going <laughs> to pretend to be but I'm just wondering if that's why you had this really kind of nice clear set of kind yeah, of rules maybe. if you like because you had that kind of freedom to choose and that can be a bit confusing and a bit a I bit think difficult. a lot of it is confusing to me actually um I uh, I, I, like I said I didn't grow up in a conventional family you know I, I, I did in the beginning and that's and I missed that mm. I don't think I realized how much you know I think my life would have been different had they stayed together I think that's a, a real a thing that I'd never really thought about mm. before that mm. I think every event that happens in your life leads you to the point where you are now and as I am I'm very happy with my life the way it is you do kind of reflect a lot of oh how would I have been a different person you know would I have a different personality you know would I have gone to this school would I have got better grades would I have not been ill or would I have not done this or done that or mm. you know there's there's lots of um questions that have been raised from you know just that dynamic breaking up of, of our family and I don't know whether it's because I missed both of my parents. That's why I wanted to be with both of them at different times of my life. Yeah. Um, so I think for me now, it's a case of I can only go off how I was brought up. Like, like I said, there's no rule book. No one's telling me how to do it. It's like raising a teenager right now. I've got a four, like my eldest is about to turn 14. I don't know how to do that. I'm winging it. Like I've never had a teenager before. And I, I was think about how I was when I was 14. Yeah, oh my God, nightmare. I can only go off how I was as a teenager and how my mum and dad raised me separately, you know, and, how, how, and what I learned from them and, it's, but I think the rules can be so outdated too. Because mm. uh, do you think there's changed. outdated views as well mm. about yeah. about families? I, 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 I do. still I think feel there's a complete... stigma about parents who've split up. I don't know whether it's kind of an outdated thing. I just think because um, the times have changed so much. Everything's digital now, mm. and uh, you know we're bringing millennials up. You know, I was born in seventy eight, so I'm so old. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, um, I, yeah, like I said, we are bringing up millennials. Well, I'm bringing up a, like a, two little millennials. You know, everything's about iPads and social media. Mm. And, you know, I don't actually ever see my kids with a Barbie doll, you know, which is crazy because my youngest is just about to turn nine. And I'm like, what do you want for your birthday? She says, clothes. I like, looked at her like, <laughs> what? Clothes? You're nine. <laughs> Here's a Barbie. Yeah, <laughs> Take the Barbie. Um yeah, no, it's it's just it's just very strange. I think you know, I I, I do think there has been a massive shift over the years. I think you, you've just kind of, 
I kind of get um, guided by them now rather than it being mm. the other way around. Um, and I think you've just got to have a lot of patience and time and um, try and instill some, you know, your values of how you were, you know, brought up and obviously teach them right from wrong and, and to be respectful and to clean up after yourself. <laughs> um, those, you know, kind of things. And yeah. to do well in school and, you know, and to be mindful of how they're being influenced by other children mm-hmm. in school if that makes How sense. How do your children feel about sort of the fact that mum and dad lives in separate places? Do they even consider it? No, because they don't know anything different. Um, they, they, this, like Mia was one when I split up from her dad and Lexi was three. Mm-hmm. And I, I think... I, I maybe not purposely but when you know a relationship's not working rather than stay for the kids when they won't know any different you've got to do what's right for you at that point I think I think you have to put think about yourself and your happiness in a, in a situation because I think in the long run if you stay for a child and then it ultimately ends up breaking up a family but they are used to seeing mummy and daddy together and that's something that is going to get instilled in them and maybe affect them in a negative way um so I'm kind of lucky in a way that this it, it kind of happened when they were just babies. So because I guess it can be like you were saying, was it? Did you say nine? No, uh, when no. you broke. Oh, like, well, yeah, yeah, I was broke. nine. Yeah, so you have a bit more of a memory of, kind yeah, of what I remember, happened. I remember everything. Like I remember be, from being. I probably remember from about four years old being in um, you know a family unit, and I remember everything up until you know. Just and I guess you kind of long for that then a little bit, like a long for a kind of time gone by when mum and dad were together and maybe yeah. some people think, oh, maybe mm. it was a bit of a happy time. Whereas, like you were saying, it was, it's like you never knew anything different and now you don't really care yeah. and you've got that choice if you want to make that contact in the future. Yeah, I think that what the decision you made to, to nip it in the bud early when she, they were one and three, I think is the best thing you could have done yeah. because then they'd have been used to something so different and imagine having to go through that you know like you did it's Mm. awful the last thing you want to do is do it to your kids as well so the best thing to do is do it early because then they don't know any different it's like for me as well it's like the reason you know one of the reasons why I haven't settled down with a partner someone is because I want to find the right person Mm. to bring into the family home Mm. not just the for now person that gets quite stressful the older they get as well isn't it like you said if you bring a new partner in age three or four it's Mm. okay well they don't know any different from from um, from my side of things in my home it's just been me yeah like consistently and I guess that's a lot of pressure for you as well when you go on a date with somebody and you think oh if I'm bringing this person back they're not only dating me they're almost sort of like dating the the kids as well I've not had to think about it because I've not met anyone I want to involve in my kids lives if I'm honest Mm -hmm. you know like I said I don't want to find the for now person I want to settle down with the forever person that will will you know be around and you know be in the kids lives so for now, it's, it's it, I don't even think about it. Mm-hmm. And honest. being a single parent, have you ever faced any judgment at all for it? No, I don't. I don't see why I, I would because it's it's all it, it's not a new thing. Do you know what I mean? It's this has been going on. Like I said, I was nine when my and I'm forty one, so when my parents split up, and it's more common than I think people realise. You know, I think maybe more back in those days, it it, it's a bit of a stigma to it. But there are so many different kind of families these days, you know. And I think big up the single mums, the single dads. You know, it isn't just all about single mums. There are single dads out there doing it on their own too. It's funny that sometimes there's a bad rep for anything. They're, they're doing the whole job on their own. Why are yeah. people looking down on these people rather than being like, oh my God, it's you're like a saying, machine. But it's also like saying, bad on you for not being able to make your relationship work. What? Like yeah. it's... Yeah. it's but that's, that's where the two right. get really difficult, isn't exactly. it? Because it's a reflection on a failed relationship rather than it being like a reflection of a good thing on an amazing parent. Yeah. Yeah. Did your mum, did you ever feel like your mum ever struggled with being a single parent at all? I mean, yeah. I mean, she wouldn't have, she, she never showed that to me. It's only recently that I've realised how much she would have struggled, you know, and I'd, I'd have just been oblivious to it. Um, you know, and I think especially being a single dad in the show and having to go through them storylines of all the difficult times of not being with the mum and stuff like that. You know, I know it's, nothing compared to the real thing but 
it gave me a good insight to actually how hard working single parents are you know like yourself and like my mum she you know did the best she could and she fought mm. for what you know whatever I needed or whatever I wanted um as much as she could and I'll always be grateful for that mm -hmm. because she could have just easily done the bare minimum for me and just put put me through school and then that was it you know but she's done all the the what you'd expect mm -hmm. you know and I think that also is because I'm an only child and it's be, it was easier for her to give me all her attention um because she dedicated her life to me because she was my chaperone on here for 16 years wow. oh well for, I think it's 14 15 years um so she gave up a job everything to come here and do this for me which you know I wouldn't be here without her mm -hmm. so I owe everything to her so everything now is really I'm trying to pay it back to her mm -hmm. because of what she's done for me what would you say to the people who say that the way you were raised and the way your family is now isn't isn't a normal family, isn't a typical family? I don't think you can call it a normal family yeah. anymore. I think it's quite narrow-minded to say that, oh, your family's not normal because what, how can what you say normal? what normal what is? What is normal? Like, I just, I completely agree. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? Like, I think as long as... I mean, um, as long as my kids are well brought up and well looked after, the, the kids' dads do such an amazing mm -hmm. job. Like, I can't even fault, or t they probably do a better job than I do, you know? <laughs> 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 they do probably do. Um, you, you, you can't fault it as long as they are loved and being brought up well and they are in a stable family, happy family home, then, you know, I'd, what else do you need? Well, yeah, really. exactly. What and like we have so many different types of family as well, don't we? We have yeah. people brought up by their older siblings. We have people who have adoptive parents. Mm. We have surrogates. This is things we've talked about in previous episodes on Don't Filter Feelings. Mm. There's so many different ways we can do it now. And especially in this day and age, there's no normal. Everything's mm. just whatever you want it to be. So if you want to be in that, well, whether you get a choice or not, if you want to be in that family, you can be and you shouldn't be stigmatised by it. What advice would you give to people about being in a modern family? Just enjoy it. I mean, you don't realise what you've got until you haven't got it. Steph, what would be your advice? Do you know what? Um, just do you. Yeah. Like, everyone's different. And I think just embrace it exactly. and care what anyone else thinks, you know, who are in the right kind of family. <laughs> there's no right kind of family. No. It's there's your family and that's all that matters. Yeah. Ellis and Steph, thank you very much for joining us on Don't Filter Feelings. If you want more, guys, you can search for the hashtag or check out Hollyoaks on your social feeds. And if you've been infected by anything you've heard on this podcast or seen on Hollyoaks, there's help and support over at channel4.com slash support. Really hope you've enjoyed this podcast and please please leave us a rating and a review uh, of the episode wherever it is that you listen